I am an enormous advocate of protein and have been from the very, very early on. In fact, the, in the low carb community, I was very struck by people who were demonizing protein. In, in, in fact, I was so impressed in, in a negative way by, by these views that I gave a talk. One of my very first talks that people can still find on YouTube was me defending protein, referring to the insulin to glucagon ratio, um, and the differences of, of insulin response um, to protein in the context of a high carb diet and the difference in response to protein in the context of a low carb diet. And it is very, very different. The degree to which protein elicits or amino acids elicit an insulin response depends heavily on the underlying glycemia or the glucose that is coming with those amino acids in some instances. So I'm an enormous defender in, uh, of protein and even advocate which is why prioritized protein is one of my central dogmas when it comes to nutrition. Um, the beauty of protein is that it is, I would say, calorically inert. I think that one of the problems with the thermodynamic view of obesity and this obsession with calories is that we assign calories to a class of macronutrient that is not a fuel. Protein is not a fuel. I don't think on any label you look at, protein should be counted as having a caloric load because it is all but the most it is a rare instance when you're relying on amino acids for energy. That is not common. It's not healthy. Um, and again, thankfully, it's not common. So I think protein should be off the label. I mean, list it, sure, but don't give it a caloric value. That's not accurate. Um, uh, so because we don't use the energy for uh, the, the protein for energy, we use it for a building block. Energy is glucose and fats. That's what we burn. Amino acids, even the rare instances when we are burning for energy, it is an incredibly modest amount, unless we get to true starvation. And that is the difference between fasting and starvation. The difference is, do you have fat to burn? Once you run out of fat and now you're in a caloric deficit, now you're burning muscle, relying on amino acids for energy, that is starvation. But I also think we should eat protein the way, if you'll pardon me for saying, invoking deity, the way God intended. In nature... Protein always comes with fat. There is no exception to this. No exception. But in our hubris or our fear of fat, we have pulled the two apart. And now we have sources of just primarily protein. You know, people will invoke chicken, but look a hundred years ago, people didn't really eat chicken. We kept the chickens around for their eggs, which are this perfect balance of one-to-one -one protein to fat. You look in the U.S., What's happened to chicken consumption over since 1909, it was essentially zero. And now it is the single most common source of meat we eat. And I'm not trying to vilify chicken meat. I'm not. But I do think it's worth sort of wondering how we used to eat once upon a time when we weren't so afraid of fat. Chicken meat has fat. There is no such thing as protein in nature without fat. And that's why my third rule is don't fear fat. In other words, don't fear the fat that comes with the protein that you're attempting to prioritize. When we eat fat with protein, we digest the fat, uh, sorry, we digest the protein better. Most people just think of protein as it's having its own digestive pathway and fat as having its own digestive pathway, pathway. Yet bile acids that are secreted when we eat fat only actually accelerate the proteolytic enzymes that are involved in protein digestion. We literally digest the protein better when the protein comes with fat.